But, you know, after last night's crazy debate, it was a shout fest, really. It dissolved very, very quickly. It, could sitting out something like that actually be helping out to 2020 Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard, who joins us now from Washington? Congresswoman, very good to have you. Thank you, Neil. Good to see you. Maybe it was a good thing you weren't there. What do you think? Uh, I, I couldn't watch much of it to be honest. And I, I believe that voters probably walked away not getting much value and feeling pretty frustrated given the serious, serious challenges that we're facing right now with things like like the coronavirus, something that is threatening the safety, health and well-being and lives of the American people and something that requires all of us as Americans coming together, standing together, and standing together just as we would in wartime, except now in this case, the enemy is a virus, and we've got to make sure that we prevent its spread. Then um, what did you think of Chuck Schumer and some other Democrats, and Nancy Pelosi among them, saying um, Republicans are arguing, playing politics with it, arguing about the amount of money he's committing to this, is it enough, et cetera. Is this the time to be doing that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now is the time where Democrats and Republicans, whether it's Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, we've got to stand together as Americans and put the health and well-being of the American people first. We cannot afford to be penny wise and pound foolish. We've got to come together and say, OK, what actions are necessary immediately to prevent what some people are saying is inevitable? I, th I think it's wrong for some people to say, well, well, it's inevitable that this is going to come here and it's going to take the lives of millions of Americans. No, I don't accept that. We've got to take action now to say, all right, let's let's mobilize uh, uh, trainers to go and have these boot camps for healthcare professionals in our hospitals, for first responders, for teachers in our schools, for the private sector, for employers, to make sure that everyone really understands both the seriousness of the threat and the actions that need to be taken individually and collectively to prevent it's spread, prevent this pandemic, or uh, soon to be pandemic, from, from reaching that point. Um, you know, there is a mentality that the, the president cited when he was in India, in Congress, and that no matter what kind of figure he proposed, Chuck Schumer was going to reject it, and that the politics is alive and well. It, it sounds like you're saying all of that should cease and desist, like now. It, I mean, it, it, yesterday. This yeah. should have happened yesterday. The, the fact that, look, in my home state of Hawaii, they, they're not able to get their hands on testing kits. We have this shortage of masks that are not available even to healthcare professionals who are having folks come in to their hospitals or to their ERs. We're, we're already behind the curve. We cannot afford for this senseless partisan bickering and putting partisan politics literally ahead of the lives of the American people. This requires leadership. It requires us standing together as Americans where when we do this, we know we can accomplish anything. And it requires working with other countries, putting cooperation over conflict, because we're just we're just a plane away from many other countries, different regions of the world who, who are already seeing this virus starting to hit them. We cannot do this alone. You know, it got surprising scant attention in the debate last night in the scheme of things, Congressman. But I'm curious, there did seem to be a pile on, uh, on Bernie Sanders. And some of those on that stage are saying, he's your nominee. You might as well kiss the election goodbye. Do you agree with that? Well, first of all, to your point, I agree. There was scant attention on this, again, which just shows just how out of touch they are with the reality of this, this crisis that we're facing before us. Uh, look, there are a lot of, there, there are 50, what, seven states now left to vote. I think that the voices of the American people need to be respected. And as the pundits do their thing, really it's those votes that people cast uh, that will make that determination about the direction they want for our country. All right, I believe you meant 47 uh, in the scheme of things. But let me ask you, Congressman. It, 47, it, it thank you. It does seem that, um, <laughs> that the fear is Bernie Sanders' views are so out of the mainstream, so out of touch. He becomes a nominee. There's no way in heck he would become president. Do you agree with that? Or would you be supporting any one of those others if they get the nomination? Uh, well, first of all, I'm still running for president, and that's exactly where I'm focused. I think the thing that scares folks is that someone like Bernie Sanders, someone like myself, I don't agree with all of Bernie Sanders' positions on things. I do agree with some. But I think what's clear is that we don't uh, march to the beat of the warmongering for foreign policy establishment in Washington or the Democratic powerful elite. Uh, this is really about 
putting the interests of the American people first and really working to address those challenges and bringing the different ideas that we all have as Americans to the forefront, whether they are uh, Democrat or Republican or independent ideas, saying we've got to put country first because people are suffering and struggling and being left behind so long as politicians in Washington are playing games with their lives. You know, some people look at Bernie Sanders as too old, too extreme, and that if he ran and got the nomination, he'd need to seek out somebody young, maybe a woman, someone whose views are not quite to that extreme. That's you. <laughs> I know you're trying to break news right now here, Neil. <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you I'm, kidding? I'm I, still, I I'm... just look at stocks. <laughs> so take no, stock I, I'm of still... that. What do you think? I, I'm again, yeah, I, I am. Uh, Bernie is a friend, but I, I'm very focused on uh, doing exactly what we're doing, carrying this message that I'm well, sharing that with you and your viewers what, here that today. That would moderate what seems an extreme ticket, right? Potentially so. But I think what's what's most important for us to focus on is what are voters looking for when you look at the dissatisfaction they have with the the political institutions, the powerful elite who run Washington. They're looking for a champion. They're looking for leaders who will really bring about this vision that our founders had for us, a government of, by and for the people. And so really, regardless of party, that is where our focus must be. Tulsi Gabbard, great catching up with you. Good to see you, Neil. All right, be well. In the meantime, facing an emergency, preparing for public safety.